This is truly a landmark day in Salt Lake City. For years, Salt Lake City has been working hard to address our clean air crisis and address the impacts of climate change. As a city, we have taken some amazing steps. We have been upgrading our fleet, maximizing efficiencies in our buildings, supporting programs to help get vehicles off the road, and embracing alternate sources of energy on a municipal level. In January, during my State of the City address, I set a citywide goal of powering 100% of our internal municipal operations with clean energy by 2032. We took a large step toward this goal a month ago by becoming a major partner with Rocky Mountain Power's solar subscriber program. And now, through an ambitious joint resolution on sustainability signed last night by the City Council and me, Salt Lake City has taken another large step forward. First, this resolution expands our 2032 renewable energy goal to include community electricity use. We are committed to our city completely run on renewable energy by 2032. <laughs> through, through just this step, Salt Lake City will be a leader in the 100% movement, both in the country and worldwide. And today, we dare to go even further. With this resolution, our city is also committing to reducing our community's overall greenhouse gas emissions by 80% by 2040. Without question, this is the most ambitious step taken by Salt Lake City or any city in Utah to address the threat of climate change. In fact, the commitment laid out in this joint resolution represents one of the most rapid transitions to a low carbon community in the United States and in fact in the world. These goals will not be easy to achieve. They will require a community-wide commitment, which is why members of nonprofits and businesses, including representatives of Rocky Mountain Power, who will be instrumental to helping us reach this goal, join us today. We know this is a challenge we can meet head on, and we know we can no longer be satisfied with gradual progress. The good news is that we will build on a significant, on significant progress Salt Lake City has already made to begin this trajectory toward a clean energy system. We have too much at stake to maintain the status quo from our air and water to our billion dollar ski and outdoor industry. We also know that as the capital city, it is our responsibility to lead. We have the obligation to lay the groundwork for the most prosperous, secure, and healthy future for our city and our children. My colleagues on the City Council and I are complete in complete agreement. It is time for us to not only plan for the future, but to take action. I'd like to now welcome Council Member Erin Mendenhall to the podium. Her focus on these issues, along with the support of the Council as a whole, makes today possible. Thank you. Thank you, good morning. Thank you, Mayor, for your immediate leadership on this issue upon taking office. And I'm so grateful that we could come at this resolution from a joint perspective. I want to recognize some of the clean air champions and partners in this crowd today. Ryan Evans in the back there from the chamber has been a leader in air quality for years. Councilman Andy Bierman from Park City here, who we've looked at community choice aggregation over the years and is a leader in air quality in our Summit County and on the Mountain Accord to be sure. Uh, also, 
Former Mayor Ted Wilson, I got a shout out to you, leading UCARE and finding money for air quality research all over the state. Uh, and our Senate candidate, Bill Barron over here, has been a leader on climate change and air quality issues. We have a lot of supporters here today. I just want to thank a few of them who are here. And my fellow councilwoman, uh, Lisa Adams. Last night when I read the resolution for council approval, I became quite emotional, which surprised me. I think that was the first time I teared up at a council meeting. I am passionate, passionate about reducing our carbon footprint. I've been working on clean air for almost a decade. And I believe that this resolution directs what would be the biggest possible impact for Salt Lake City on the air we breathe. I want this for Salt Lake City residents, and I believe our residents want this too. When I started working on air pollution issues, I talked about millions of driving decisions every single day that have an impact on our, our particle pollution, our ozone pollution. In the coming years, we're going to see building energy consumption surpass vehicle emissions as the number one source of pollution. We have to transition to renewable energy supplies for our city in order to change the course of air pollution in Salt Lake City. It is a necessity. Much like our driving decisions, there are literally millions of energy consumption decisions happening every day in our state and certainly in our city too. Affecting all of these energy choices on an individual level has been an objective of Salt Lake City for longer than I have been here. We see it in the Clean the Air Challenge. We see it in our distribution of public EV charging stations. We see it in our sustainability dashboard and initiatives to help uh, our residents reduce their carbon footprint. But the individual level is a slow and long way when you have as many residents and users of the power as we do. The source of that power is the underlying and critical issue. Charging our phones, our computers, your Fitbit, anytime you plug in, even charging my electric car currently pulls the majority of power from coal-fired power plants. Without this transition to renewable energy, those polluting coal fires will continue to be stoked and our air will continue to be polluted. This upcoming franchise agreement with Rocky Mountain Power is Salt Lake City's best opportunity to improve the air we breathe in the coming decades. No questions. Improving our air has long time been a, a council priority that we've supported with uh, carbon uh, fee dividend resolution just recently. We've supported with a feasibility study uh, that we're partnering with Park City and Summit County on to investigate other carbon reduction uh, methods through renewable energies. But this goal in our joint resolution may seem the most aggressive. To that I say this resolution is realistic if we are to actually change the course of air pollution in our city. Thank you. And I'd like, I'm sorry, I'd like to welcome Vicki Bennett, our freshly minted Director of Sustainability. And I can't even start to thank everyone, especially Mayor Biskupski, Council Member Mendenhall, for the actions that we've taken and the progress that we've been able to make. I've worked for the city for over 15 years and we have come a long way. It's a pleasure serving here alongside all of you and finding ways to continue our progress. Many of you may wonder, why Salt Lake City? Why are we taking the lead? Why are cities so invested in this effort called global, you know, on global climate change? As co-chair of the Urban Sustainability Directors Network, a national group of professionals taking the lead on this, I can lend a little bit of insight for you. Today, an estimated 54% of the global population lives in urban areas, and this is expected to grow to 70% in a few short decades. However, cities contribute globally over 70% of the carbon pollution emitted now. Our density, our jobs, and our use of large amounts of energy means that we are a big part of the problem, and we're also instrumental to the solution. Cities are leading on climate change and clean energy solutions nationally, as well as globally, and we're not operating in isolation. Instead, we are sharing information and working collaborative, collaboratively to most efficiently address such issues such as climate change. 
However, there's a change in approach and a scale of ambition within cities within the last few years. We're shifting our focus from the incremental changes, small wins that we've had to reduce pollution here and there, to transformative change. And the change begins with our electricity sector. Emissions from Salt Lake City's electricity use creates over 50% of the pollution associated with our community's carbon footprint. This means that sourcing our electricity associated with all of this from clean sources is going to be the biggest thing that our city can do to reduce it. So that's why our first goal is transitioning to 100% renewable electricity resources by 2032. And we're committed to partnering with Rocky Mountain Power on a path forward. The second goal of 80% reduction of greenhouse gases by 2040 takes us even further. This includes carbon emissions from transportation and also loops in natural gas that we use to heat our homes and buildings. Our sustainability team has been studying the issue of climate change and implementing solutions for a long time. Now with this ambitious resolution, we have clear community level targets to work towards and implement. Here's what we're currently doing to go down this path. In terms of electricity generation, we are currently teaming up with other local governments in Utah including Summit County and Park City to evaluate pathways to more clean energy. The partnership will result in a report that details how to transition so far to more renewable energy for Salt Lake City, including our 100% renewable electricity goal. We are also encouraging a range of energy efficiency measures through initiatives such as our Project Skyline, challenging large building owners and operators in Salt Lake City to reduce their energy use. On the transportation front, the city has implemented a number of initiatives, such as Hive Pass for discounted access to tr public transit, green bike, new bike lanes, and public electric vehicle charging stations. We are currently planning to grow our EV charging network with over 25 charging ports later this year. A plan is also under development to reflect this momentum and convey the path forward towards the goals referenced in today's resolution. You can visit our Sustainability Department's website, slcgreen.com, for more information on these goals and how we plan to achieve them. There you'll find Climate Positive SLC page, which will be updated on a recurring basis as more information and solutions become available. Everyone can play a role. A few immediate actions include riding transit, biking or carpooling, considering solar power, we have many options available, including everyone's options of having it on their home, and the city is this year waiving permitting fees for that, or Rocky Mountain Power's subscriber solar program, replacing your lights with LEDs, and purchasing energy efficient appliances. So let me repeat what Mayor Biskupski and Council, Men Council Member Mendenhall have so powerfully said. Today is a historic day. We've committed to bold actions to tackle big problems. And our success lies in the ability to move forward together, to collaborate and cooperate as a community across all sectors as, and as individuals. The Utah Climate Action Network, which kicked off earlier this year, will be a part of the framework that allows this collaboration. Thank you for joining us today to take action. Thank you to all of our city employees and partners that have joined us. And thank you to our community as we commemorate this historic agreement.